two other quick points. One is the low fidelity of the wireframe. Um, we keep that intentional because we don't want anyone to be confused that this is actually uh, what the final design looked like. And the second point is um, obviously with the news of uh, Sketchflow, Expression Blend 3, whereby you may want to throw away some of your concepts and you want to have the capability to do so, bringing wireframing into the Expression Blend tool set through Sketchflow, it no longer does it have to be throwaway. So now your wireframes are actually the start design asset that could carry th all the way through to development. And while we're on interaction design, last thing I want to talk about is uh, interaction wireframes. And so this is the final point here, and it's about being able to capture and communicate complex gestures. So now that we're in the new space, um, it's no longer button click. It's really about uh, how the user with their hands interacts with the environment. And we need to be able to capture that in the same sort of rough way uh, and be able to solicit that, show it in front of users and, and, uh, and solicit feedback to affect change. And so we do that through a series of images that's almost like a flip book and shows ghost hands interacting with the environment, interacting with the system, um, and, and the, uh, the effect that it has. So we have our wireframes now, so we have a concept that we like. We've uh, we fleshed it out, we're happy with it, our users are happy with it. Now we get into this visual design phase, and we're building composites uh, to show how the actual application will look when it's, when it's finally ready and deployed in, in, in an environment. And it's, this is about a, a visual design phase, and we really, we don't do this for every single wireframe. We really pick and choose some key wireframes where the, visually, the, where the visual design really affects um, how users may interact with it. So that's the first thing. Um, we'll pick wireframes to turn into composites whereby the visual design actually informs aspects of the interaction. So we see this in Surface and we see this in Nui, whereby a slight shimmer on a particular object or um, the effect of light or 3D really starts to affect uh, how our user will interact with it. So we'll pinpoint those uh, and we'll, we'll flesh them out in composites uh, or even prototypes at this stage in some, some cases to see, you know, from a visual perspective, does this communicate what we want it to communicate? And then the second thing is obviously how the, the visual design affects the, the emotion and the feeling that the application gives you. And, and here I'm using another example from Barclays. And this is a design that is slightly different than the one that we actually deployed in Piccadilly Circus. And, and the difference is in the colors and, and, uh, and the, the contrast that we use. So we explored this. Um, we decided that the, the high contrast, it's really techy, it's really cool, but it really didn't align with the friendly, um, playful type application that, that we wanted to deploy there. So the background looks like it might just be an image, but in actuality, the background is a, a really interactive component of the application that responds to touch, and it's, it, it's very interactive. So here's another place where, by going through this visual design process, we were able to, to save cycles in coding by catching it early. And finally, we land ourselves in production. And production is really where we stop iterating, the developers start coding, and we start producing assets. So in GUI, we're producing uh, images, icons, um, layout styles. In natural user interface, though, we kick it up a notch. And because we're designing objects and we're, we're designing their affordances, we do a lot of 3D modeling to get it right. We do uh, sound and we do animation. And so it's really interesting to take a look at um, parallels in another vertical of our industry where they take their production very seriously. Uh, and they, they also focus a lot on wireframing and storyboarding, and that's, and that's game development. Um, and so as our interfaces are evolving, we, we start to see that we're starting to borrow more and more from game development. So that's a, a, an interesting side note. So once we're through production, uh, we have construction, we're, we're finished development, um, the main phase of development, we go into what, what we call, on the UX side, we call polish. So the, the, the development is done, we finally get users interacting with the system, hands-on, and we start to see things that we, we didn't see earlier. Um, there's only, you know, and hopefully we've been testing, using the prototypes, whatever uh, artifacts we can create from a user experience perspective up until now uh, to, to flesh out our ideas, but when we get to the polish phase, when users actually put their hands on the device, 
we start to see things that we didn't see before. And this also poses an interesting challenge because at this point, construction is complete and we're supposed to be in polish and, and really just working on tweaking those affordances and those animations and sounds so users get it. But sometimes we actually see things that, that require more thought, more change. So how do we handle that? So we, one way is we increase the polish phase. So the polish phase in and of itself becomes a, a, a second phase of development where we're back iterating with the developers. But another way is where we can start to learn from iteration in design, where when we're doing these concepts and we're doing uh, these uh, wireframes and composites, we're iterating really rapidly and we can affect change. Borrowing from that and bringing that into the development phase where the developers work in a more agile fashion and we get bits deployed to the surface sooner. And we're seeing huge successes in working in an agile method because what it does is it gets bits into the hands of our users sooner and gets feedback. And, and the nature and the, the newness of Nui um, really benefits a lot from, from being able to do that. So three things to remember. Um, start designing if, if you're not really start. Um, we, we hear so often that the, the difference in design is really the difference between, oh, hey, that's a really cool app, and wow, that app is, is an amazing idea, and by the way, it looks fantastic. Design early because designing is a really cool, cheap way uh, to flesh out concepts so you don't have to throw away code. And iterate often because it, it's very rare that we get it the first time. So uh, the more opportunity that there is for iteration um, and interaction with users, then the better the application will be. Uh, so that's, I think I'm just about at 17 minutes, so uh, I'd be happy to take any questions in the remaining few minutes that we have left. So usability testing is something that, and so the question was, when do we take usability testing into account? We take usability testing into account throughout. So we are actually doing hallway rough style usability right from the start, so it's something that we're thinking about when we're doing our, straight from the wireframe phase. But really, it becomes more and more f um, uh, process oriented and more and more formed towards the end uh, when we get more real bits. But we're thinking about uh, the as an aspect of usability right from the start. Well, it, it really depends on the application that we're building, to be completely honest with you. But um, you know, we use you know we often rely again because it's it's um, we have to keep an eye on cost and uh, and um, that always affects things. But we use a lot of hallway and gorilla style usability uh, up front, and then finally when we get uh, and when I say up front, I'm talking about uh, in wireframing and composite. So it's a lot of um, sitting down with users and using paper prototypes to go through it. Later on, uh, when we actually have bits to show, uh, we actually do uh, formed in-person usability studies that are uh, task and objective oriented. All right, guys, thank you, thank you very much. Um, Please remember to fill out the evaluation forms uh, if you can. I've put the code up top and uh, my contact information is there.